Welcome, dear friends, to a captivating tale of family bonds tested by tragedy, secrets, and unexpected twists of fate. Enjoy the story. The antiseptic smell of the hospital room couldn't mask the scent of impending loss. Five-year-old Emily Parker sat beside her grandfather's bed, her small hand gently stroking his weathered one. George Parker, once a titan of industry, now lay frail and gaunt, his life slipping away with each labored breath. Does it hurt a lot, Grandpa? Emily's voice was barely a whisper, her big blue eyes brimming with concern. George mustered a weak smile, determined not to let his little princess see his pain. No, sweetheart, I'm just a bit tired, that's all. Emily leaned in closer, her golden curls brushing against the starched hospital sheets. Grandma says you're going to meet some father soon. Is that true? A chuckle escaped George's lips, quickly followed by a wince. Oh, your grandma and her stories. Don't you worry about that, Emily. I'm not going anywhere just yet. Promise? Emily's lower lip trembled. I promise, princess. Now, how about you tell me about that pony ride I promised you? We'll go as soon as I'm out of here, okay? As Emily launched into an excited description of her dream pony, George's mind wandered to the empire he had built, an empire that would soon be left in the hands of others. He only hoped they would cherish it, as much as he cherished the little girl beside him. Long before he became Grandpa to Emily, George Parker was just another hungry kid with a dream. The year was 1985, and the streets of downtown were his classroom. Gum? Cigarettes? Get them here! A young George called out, his voice cracking with adolescence as he hawked his wares from a rickety stand on the corner of Fifth and Main. Passersby barely gave him a second glance, but George didn't care. He had a fire in his belly and determination in his eyes. This was just the beginning. Fast forward five years, and that same corner now boasted a small kiosk with Parker's conveniences proudly displayed above it. George, now sporting a hint of stubble and a permanent grin, handed change to a customer. Thanks for stopping by, Mrs. Johnson. Say hi to the kids for me. As Mrs. Johnson walked away, clutching her bag of groceries, she couldn't help but marvel at the young man's progress. That George Parker, she muttered to herself, he's going places, and go places he did. By the turn of the millennium, Parker's had become a household name, with supermarkets dotting the cityscape like stars in a constellation of commerce. Standing in front of his flagship store, a grinning George cut the ribbon at the grand opening. Cameras flashed, and reporters clamored for a quote. Mr. Parker, Mr. Parker, how does it feel to be the city's newest business mogul? George's eyes twinkled as he responded, It feels like I'm just getting started. Little did he know that his greatest adventure was yet to come. Not in the boardroom, but in the nursery of a certain blue-eyed girl who would steal his heart completely. Higher, Grandpa, higher! Emily's delighted squeals filled the air as George galloped around the living room. The little girl perched on his shoulders like a conquering queen. Sarah Parker, George's wife of 40 years, watched from the doorway, a mixture of amusement and concern on her face. George, be careful. You're not as young as you used to be. George came to a stop, panting slightly but grinning from ear to ear. Nonsense, Sarah. I feel like a spring chicken when I'm with my little princess. Michael, Emily's father and George's son, entered the room, shaking his head. Dad, you're spoiling her rotten. She's going to expect everyone to bend to her will at this rate. And why shouldn't they? George retorted, lifting Emily off his shoulders and into his arms. She's royalty, after all. Isn't that right, princess? Emily nodded solemnly, her tiara slightly askew. Grandpa says I'm the queen of his heart. Sarah and Michael exchanged a look half exasperated, half fond. There was no denying the special bond between grandfather and granddaughter. Well, your majesty, Sarah said, stepping forward, I believe it's time for your royal bath. Come on, let's get you cleaned up before dinner. As Sarah led Emily away, Michael turned to his father. Dad, I know you love her, but don't you think you're going a bit overboard? Lisa and I are trying to raise her to be grounded, you know. George's eyes softened as he looked at his son. Michael, my boy, life is short, too short to worry about going overboard with love. You'll understand one day. Michael nodded, not entirely convinced, but unwilling to argue. 
As he watched his father settle into his favorite armchair, with a contented sigh, he couldn't shake the feeling that there was a hidden depth to George's words, a depth he wasn't quite ready to fathom. The Cherry Creek Mall was bustling with weekend shoppers, a sea of bags and chatter. Lisa Parker navigated through the crowd, one hand clutching her purchases, the other holding tightly to Emily's small fingers. Can we get ice cream, Mommy? Please? Emily's eyes were fixed on the colorful display of a nearby gelato stand. Lisa checked her watch and sighed. Not today, sweetie. We're running late for dinner at Grandma and Grandpa's. Maybe next time, okay? Emily's face fell, but she nodded bravely. Okay, Mommy. As they approached the escalator, Lisa's phone buzzed. She fumbled for it, momentarily loosening her grip on Emily's hand. In that split second, everything changed. Emily, distracted by a shiny balloon floating nearby, took a step forward. Her foot landed on a patch of freshly mopped floor, the caution wet floor sign, hidden behind a potted plant. Time seemed to slow down. Lisa looked up from her phone, just in time to see Emily's feet slide out from under her. The little girl's eyes widened in surprise and fear as she fell backward, her head connecting with the sharp edge of the bottom step with a sickening thud. Emily! Lisa's scream cut through the mall's ambient noise like a knife. She dropped everything, falling to her knees beside her daughter's still form. Blood was already pooling beneath Emily's golden curls, staining the pristine mall floor. Shoppers gathered around, their faces a mix of horror and concern. Someone yelled, Call an ambulance! While another person rushed forward with a handful of napkins, pressing them gently against Emily's wound. Lisa cradled her daughter's head, heedless of the blood staining her clothes. Emily, baby, can you hear me? Please, sweetie, open your eyes. But Emily remained unconscious, her face pale and still amidst the chaos surrounding them. As the distant wail of sirens grew closer, Lisa's world narrowed to a single, desperate prayer. Please, God, let her be okay, please. The day that had started so normally had suddenly become a nightmare, and Lisa couldn't shake the feeling that nothing would ever be the same again. The fluorescent lights of the hospital corridor buzzed incessantly, their harsh glow making Lisa's already pale face look ghostly. She paced back and forth outside the operating room, her clothes still stained with Emily's blood, her eyes red-rimmed from crying. Mrs. Parker, a nurse approached, her voice gentle. Is there anyone we can call for you? Lisa nodded numbly. My husband, Michael, he should be on his way. As if summoned by her words, Michael burst through the double doors at the end of the hallway, his face a mask of panic. Lisa, where is she? How is she? Lisa fell into his arms, her composure finally crumbling. Oh, Michael, it happened so fast. There was so much blood. Michael held her tightly, his own eyes filling with tears. Shh, it's okay. She's going to be okay. Our Emily's a fighter, remember? For what seemed like an eternity, they clung to each other in the sterile hallway, the rhythmic beeping of distant machines providing a grim soundtrack to their vigil. Finally, the operating room door swung open. A tired-looking doctor emerged, pulling off his surgical cap. Mr. and Mrs. Parker? They turned to him, hands clasped tightly together. Yes? Michael's voice was hoarse with fear. The doctor's face softened. Your daughter is stable. The impact caused a small fracture and some bleeding, but we've managed to relieve the pressure. She's young and resilient. Her prognosis is good. Lisa sagged against Michael in relief. Can we see her? She's being moved to recovery now. A nurse will come get you shortly. The doctor paused, then added. There is one thing, though. During our tests, we noticed something unusual about Emily's blood type. It's not what we would typically expect given your blood types. Michael stiffened. What do you mean? It's probably nothing to worry about. These things can happen. But you might want to follow up with your family doctor, just to rule out any underlying conditions. As the doctor walked away, Michael and Lisa exchanged a look. In the midst of their relief, a small seed of doubt had been planted one that would soon grow into something neither of them could have anticipated. The Parker family home was quiet, the kind of quiet that follows in the wake of a storm. Michael sat at the kitchen table, 
his head in his hands, while his mother Sarah busied herself making tea. I just don't understand, Mom. Michael's voice was muffled. How can Emily have a different blood type? It doesn't make sense. Sarah set a steaming mug in front of her son. Michael, dear, these things happen. Medicine isn't always an exact science. But what if... Michael trailed off, unable to voice his darkest fear. What if what? Sarah prompted gently. What if Emily isn't... mine? The words hung in the air like a poisonous cloud. Sarah gasped. Michael Parker, how can you even think such a thing? Lisa loves you. She would never... But how else do you explain it? Michael's voice rose. Dad left everything to Emily in his will. What if... What if Lisa and Dad... Stop right there! Sarah's tone was sharp. Your father adored that child because she was his granddaughter, nothing more. Don't let fear and grief twist your mind, son. Unknown to both of them, Lisa stood frozen in the hallway, having overheard every word. Her hand flew to her mouth, stifling a sob. How could Michael think such a thing? How could he doubt her love, their family? With tears streaming down her face, Lisa slipped out of the house. She needed air. She needed space. But most of all, she needed answers. And she knew just where to get them. The hospital corridors seemed longer this time, each step echoing with the weight of Lisa's purpose. She found Emily's room easily, her heart clenching at the sight of her little girl, small and vulnerable amidst a tangle of tubes and wires. Oh, my brave little warrior, Lisa whispered, stroking Emily's cheek. Mommy's here. Everything's going to be all right. After spending some time with Emily, Lisa sought out the doctor who had operated on her daughter. She found him in his office, poring over some charts. Dr. Anderson? Lisa knocked tentatively. He looked up, recognition dawning on his face. Mrs. Parker, please come in. How can I help you? Lisa took a deep breath. It's about what you said earlier, about Emily's blood type. I need to know more. Dr. Anderson nodded, his expression serious. I understand your concern. While it's unusual for a child to have a blood type that doesn't match either parent, it's not impossible. There's a phenomenon called a Bombay phenotype that can cause this. Lisa leaned forward, hope blooming in her chest. Can you explain more? And is there a way to prove it? For the next hour, Dr. Anderson walked Lisa through the intricacies of blood types and rare genetic conditions. By the time she left his office, armed with medical journals and test results, Lisa felt a mix of relief and determination. Her family was being torn apart by suspicion and fear, but she now had the tools to mend it. As she headed home, Lisa steeled herself for the confrontation to come. It was time to clear the air, to fight for her marriage and for the truth. Little did she know, the storm that awaited her at home would test the very foundations of everything she held dear. The study of George Parker had always been a place of warmth and wisdom. Now, with its owner gone, it felt hollow, the leather-bound books and rich mahogany desk mere props in a play about loss. The family gathered there, Michael, Lisa, Sarah, and a surprisingly composed Emily, as Mr. Jennings, the family lawyer, prepared to read George's last will and testament. Ahem, Mr. Jennings cleared his throat, adjusting his spectacles. Let us begin. I, George Edward Parker, being of sound mind and body, do hereby declare this to be my last will and testament. As the lawyer droned on about legal jargon, Michael's eyes darted between his wife and his mother. Lisa sat ramrod straight, her face a mask of calm, while Sarah dabbed at her eyes with a lace handkerchief. Then came the bombshell. To my beloved granddaughter, Emily Rose Parker, I leave the majority of my estate, including all shares in Parker Enterprises, to be held in trust until her 21st birthday. What? Michael's voice cut through the room like a whip. That can't be right. Mr. Jennings paused, looking uncomfortable. I assure you, Mr. Parker, this is your father's expressed wish. But what about me? What about the business I've helped build? Michael was on his feet now, his face flushed with anger and disbelief. Michael, please. Sarah tried to calm her son, but he shrugged her off. No, Mom, this isn't right. None of this is right. He turned to Lisa, his eyes blazing. Did you know about this? Is this why you've been so calm? Lisa stood slowly, her voice low and controlled. Michael, you're upset. Let's discuss this later, in private. Private? Like how you and my father were private? The accusation hung in the air, 
shocking everyone into silence. Emily, who had been quietly coloring in the corner, looked up with wide, confused eyes. Daddy? Why are you yelling at Mommy? The innocence in her voice seemed to deflate Michael somewhat. He ran a hand through his hair, looking lost. I... I'm sorry, Princess. Daddy's just a little upset right now. Mr. Jennings cleared his throat again. Perhaps we should take a short recess. But Lisa shook her head. No, no more hiding, no more accusations in the dark. Michael, we need to talk. Now. As Mr. Jennings and Sarah ushered a protesting Emily out of the room, Lisa squared her shoulders. The time for truth had come, and she was ready for battle. The study door closed with a soft click, leaving Michael and Lisa alone in the tension-filled room. For a moment, neither spoke, the ticking of George's old grandfather clock, the only sound breaking the silence. How long? Michael's voice was low, dangerous. Lisa's brow furrowed. How long what, Michael? How long were you and my father? He couldn't finish the sentence, the very thought making him sick. Lisa's eyes widened in shock, then narrowed in anger. Is that really what you think of me? Of your father? My God, Michael, how could you? What am I supposed to think? Michael exploded. Emily's blood type, dad leaving everything to her. It all adds up. No, it doesn't. Lisa's voice rose to match his. She reached into her bag, pulling out a stack of papers. It doesn't add up because you're not looking at all the facts, Michael. Here, read these. She thrust the medical journals and test results into his hands. Michael stared at them confusion replacing anger on his face. What is this? It's called the Bombay phenotype, Lisa explained, her voice softening slightly. It's a rare blood condition that can make it seem like a child's blood type doesn't match their parents, but it does, Michael. Emily is our daughter through and through. Michael's hands shook as he flipped through the pages. But, but the will. Your father loved Emily because she's his granddaughter, not for any other reason. Lisa said firmly. He probably left her the business because he saw how much you've grown beyond it. You have your own dreams, Michael. Maybe this was his way of freeing you to pursue them. The fight seemed to drain out of Michael as the reality of his accusations hit him. He sank into George's old leather chair, his face in his hands. Oh God, Lisa, what have I done? Lisa moved to kneel beside him, her hand on his arm. You let fear and grief cloud your judgment but it's not too late to make things right. Just then, a soft knock at the door interrupted them. Sarah poked her head in, her expression worried. Is everything all right in here? Michael looked up, his eyes red-rimmed. Mom, I, I've been such a fool. Sarah entered the room fully, closing the door behind her. Oh, my dear boy, we all do foolish things when we're hurting. The important thing is to learn from our mistakes and move forward. As the three of them talked, the air in the study began to clear. Apologies were made, explanations given, and slowly, the bonds of family began to strengthen once more. The next few weeks were a whirlwind of activity and emotion for the Parker family. Emily recovered quickly, her resilience a constant source of amazement for her parents. The little girl seemed to bounce back from her accident with an enthusiasm that was infectious. One sunny afternoon, Michael decided to surprise Emily with a visit to the hospital. As he carried her on his shoulders down the corridor, her giggles echoed off the sterile walls. Daddy, I can touch the ceiling! Emily squealed, her small hands reaching upwards. Michael chuckled, his heart light for the first time in weeks. Careful, princess. We don't want to— Ahem. A stern voice interrupted them. Dr. Anderson stood before them, arms crossed but a twinkle in his eye. I see our star patient is making a speedy recovery, though I'm not sure piggyback rides are on the approved list of activities just yet. Michael gently lowered Emily to the ground, looking sheepish. Sorry, Doc, we got a bit carried away. Dr. Anderson's stern expression melted into a smile. Well, I suppose a little fun never hurt anyone. In fact, Emily, how would you like to go home today? Emily's eyes widened with excitement. Really? Can I, Daddy? Can I? Michael knelt down to Emily's level, his eyes misting slightly. Of course you can, sweetheart. Let's go tell mommy the good news, okay? As they left the hospital that day, Emily clutching her favorite stuffed animal and Michael holding her small hand, there was a sense of a new beginning. 
The shadows that had loomed over their family were beginning to recede, replaced by the warm light of understanding and forgiveness. That night after Emily had been tucked into bed with promises of her own room being just as she left it, Michael and Lisa found themselves alone in their bedroom. The air between them was thick with unspoken words and lingering regret. Michael sat on the edge of the bed, his shoulders slumped. Lisa, I... I don't even know where to begin. Lisa joined him, taking his hand in hers. How about we start with, I'm sorry, and go from there? A choked laugh escaped Michael's lips. I'm sorry seems so inadequate. I accused you of... God, I can't even say it now. How can you even look at me? Lisa's grip on his hand tightened. Because I love you, you big idiot. Yes, you hurt me. Yes, you jumped to ridiculous conclusions. But you're also the man who stood by me through thick and thin for years. The man who cried when Emily was born. Who checks under her bed for monsters every night. Michael turned to face her his eyes searching hers. I don't deserve you. Probably not, Lisa said with a small smile. But you're stuck with me anyway. And then, in a move that surprised them both, Michael slid off the bed onto one knee. Lisa Parker, will you marry me? Again? Lisa burst out laughing. What? Michael grinned, a hint of his old, boyish charm returning. I mean it. Let's renew our vows. Start fresh. Show the world and ourselves that we're in this for the long haul, no matter what life throws at us. Tears sparkled in Lisa's eyes as she nodded. Yes, yes, you wonderful, infuriating man. I'll marry you again. As they sealed their promise with a kiss, both felt a sense of renewal, of hope. The road ahead might not be smooth, but they would travel it together, stronger for having weathered this storm. Nine months later, the Parker family gathered once again in a hospital room. But this time, the atmosphere was one of joy and anticipation rather than fear and uncertainty. Lisa lay in the hospital bed, her face glowing despite the exhaustion of labor. In her arms, she cradled a tiny bundle wrapped in a soft pink blanket. Michael stood beside her, one arm around Emily, who was perched on a chair, peering curiously at her new sister. Everyone, Lisa said softly, we'd like you to meet Olivia Hope Parker. Sarah, who had been hovering nervously in the background, stepped forward with tears in her eyes. Oh, she's beautiful. Look at those tiny fingers. Emily reached out tentatively to touch her sister's hand. She's so small, Mommy. Was I that small? Michael chuckled, ruffling Emily's hair. Even smaller, Princess. But you grew up big and strong, and so will Olivia. As the family cooed over the newest addition, Lisa caught Michael's eye over Olivia's head. The look that passed between them spoke volumes, of love rekindled, of trust rebuilt, of a future full of promise. In that moment, Lisa thought of George. She could almost hear his booming laugh, could almost see the pride in his eyes as he looked upon his growing family. He might be gone, but his legacy lived on, not just in the business he'd built, but in the love that bound them all together. As if sensing her thoughts, Michael leaned down and whispered in her ear, Dad would have loved this. Lisa smiled, tears pricking her eyes. He does love this, she said softly. He's here with us, in every beat of Olivia's heart, in every smile on Emily's face. And as the afternoon sun streamed through the window, bathing the room in a warm golden glow, the Parker family stood united. They had weathered the storm, emerged stronger, and now faced the future together, a future bright with the promise of new beginnings and endless possibilities.